I realize at some point life is going to be over. And am I okay with where I'm at today? No, I'm not. Like, I'm just not. And if you're okay with where you are, stop trying to change. That's half the problem. If you're okay with where you are, why are you complaining that you don't have these things? So you're either okay with where you're at or you want to be somewhere else. Like there's really no middle ground. And so if you want to be somewhere else, you have to stop acting as if you're okay with where you are. If you're okay with where you are, you have to stop desiring that's going to make where you are more miserable. At the end of the day, it's just a choice. Welcome to the Jasmine Star Show, where over the last year, I've had the opportunity to invite guest co-host. You might be familiar, Jen Gottlieb, and I just had a conversation on the podcast, and she talked about amazing guests she is curating just for you. Now, as a quick reminder, the theme that we're focusing on is taking the first step without knowing if it's the right first step, battling the fear, and just taking action. Today on our show, I am very honored to have just met and already been wowed by Jason Phillips. So first and foremost, Jen, welcome to the Jasmine Star Show. Jason, welcome to the Jasmine Star Show. I'm very happy. I can say we're so happy you're here. <laughs> yes. Uh, it is. It's an absolute pleasure. I was telling you guys this before we started recording. I am completely honored to be here. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So Jen, lay, lay the foundation. Talk yes. to me about how he was one of the very first people. You're like, Jasmine, I really mm -hmm. want listeners to connect with Jason. I think he was the first one. Wow. So hey, I, I yes, that's okay. crazy. Wow, that says a you lot, were the Jason. first person that came to mind. I I met Jason through a mutual friend. Uh -huh. We were connected through our friend Randy Garn, who okay. you also know oh, Randy, yeah. um, because Jason was throwing an event, yep. and Jason throws massive events for personal trainers and people in the fitness industry yeah. and coaches. And I used to be a personal trainer, and I used to be a fitness coach. And then I was teaching people how to build brands and do PR. And I was like, this couldn't be a more perfect audience for me amazing. to speak to. Yeah. And I had never gotten to speak in front of an audience full of fitness professionals other oh, than wow. the very first time I ever spoke, which was in front of 12 people sitting on the floor. And they were all fitness professionals. And so I was brought back to that moment where that was the first time I ever spoke in front of a group. It was 12 people. And then I got to go to your event. And I walked into this event. I didn't really know who he was. There was what, 500 people there 800. 800. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't okay. even do it justice. 800 people there. It was an unbelievable room. The energy was insane. Everybody was sitting there like so excited to learn. I see you take the stage. I'm like, who is this person? Mm. Just owning that room. It was such a community. I get on stage and you told me that my event was your favorite stage. Your event was my favorite stage. Oh, that's so cool. Because I had this flashback of when my very first time speaking was in front of fitness pros. And then I got to be the person that I am now speaking mm. to the person that I used to be. Mm -hmm. And it was so special. And you just treated me like gold there. And I was like, this is someone I want to know. And then I learned more about you and your journey. And I'm like, everyone needs to know who Jason Phillips is. Well, I appreciate that. I think, um, A, I'm glad that we treated you like gold. That's the biggest thing that like, I took away from that is I always want people that come to, that come to our events to feel valued. I want them to walk away with things. Um, you know, it's, I know, I feel like as somebody that coaches people in the fitness space to get to where they want to be, be it more impact, more income, or a combination of the two, like I've, I've always had that visionary aspect. And so I was like, all right, well, Jen is the best at what she does. And I knew that my audience wasn't overly familiar, but I'm like, man, as soon as they're exposed to Jen Gottlieb, they're going to be floored. And I told you this in complete candor after the event, you were, if not the top rated, like one of the top rated speakers of the event and everyone's like, I need to know more about Jen. Um, and so I was like, I need to know more about Jen. Like we had had that brief connection through Randy, but I was like, I need to be closely connected to you. Um, I wanted to learn from you. I've been extremely fortunate that you've just opened up your world to me. Um, and so I thank you for that, for that day, but I thank you for the value that you've brought to our community and, and that you're bringing to everybody. You know, I, I've been fortunate enough to go on some podcasts before and, and I always say like at the end, I'm like, well, I just thank the host. So like, thank you both, right? <laughs> like you guys, I don't think people realize like you have made this happen, like flying in, getting in a studio, like, you know, quickly across the country for you. And it's mm -hmm. like, you're taking so much time and effort to pull these guests together to, to do these things. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, like the logistics of flying across the country right. and getting a studio. And it's like, 
they they feel like it's so much, but in reality, it's like you just do it, right? Like you Ooh. find the way, you just go, like you yeah. just make it happen. Mm. And and so I'm eternally grateful for the opportunity, but I'm eternally mm. grateful for obviously the impact that you cool. guys are they're paying forward through through things like this. I love this. Uh, so I want to pause. Sometimes I, I pause and I repeat things just so it hits with me. Is just doing it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just taking action, just and that it. is going to be the through line. And so, oftentimes, people will watch or they'll hear, and they say, "Well, I wish I had that thing. I wish I I knew how to get the fire under my. I wish I was like Jason." And then he says, "Well, you just do it." And oftentimes, people are like, "Well, how?" So when you think back and you look back at the arc of your life, wh what was the muscle that you started honing <laughs> to say, "Well, then you just do it." Yeah. Like, what is that? Get us into that mindset. It's so and funny. And hold on, hold on, Jason. I'm so sorry. Forgive yeah. me. For people who are watching and they think it's going to be like a fitness podcast. I mean, take what take. Well, I I want to say it's like a soul fitness podcast. Yeah. Like we're going to be talking about mindset and entrepreneurship and by mechanism of the things that you do. But I don't want somebody to be like, we're not going to make you do like burpees, right? Like this is like <laughs> I'm not going to make you do burpees because I'm not doing them with you these days. So you know, you met me ten years ago, maybe. But okay, uh, cool, no, cool. it's um. No, I'm actually going to take you anywhere but fitness. Uh, Let's so, go back to the muscle. Like, how does somebody say, like, okay, how do I yeah. do? I've, I've always had, I don't know if I want to call it like bravado, false bravado. Like, okay. I've had this thing in me my whole life, like dating back to four years old, that I'm like, if somebody can do it, I can do it. Like, mm. not like mm. maybe it's why not me? Maybe it's, maybe I was too dumb to realize how hard things were. But like, I genuinely have always believed everything is possible. And so like I started soccer when I was four years old. And like, if you would have asked me at four years old, what are you going to do with your life? And then maybe you ask every kid, <laughs> I'm going to play pro soccer. Right. But I played for the U S in 2000. Like I represented our country. Oh, wow. We went to wow. Germany. I didn't like, know that. like, so we play, I played in the Harlem cup. I represented the U S and then, you know, I, uh, I picked up a golf club for the first time at the age of 14. And it was like a stupid summer thing. I went with my boys and like we were at the driving range. I missed the ball more times than I hit the ball. And I left that session, like that very session. And I said, no, I'm going to play on the PGA Tour. Like I'm going to be a pro golfer. Well, I turned pro in, uh, what was it? I don't know, 2005. I played a couple pro tournaments for two years, right? I played two years on tour. Got um, I got into the personal training world and I saw these really successful personal trainers and I was like, dope, I'm going to make a million dollars being a trainer. And you know, my first online business, I scaled to 3 million. Okay. And, and then it was like, great, I'm going to help other coaches. And I saw people talking about eight figures and I was like, cool, I'm going to build a $10 million business. And so, you know, we crossed eight figures two years ago. And so I don't know if it's just like, I, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know if I'm just too dumb to not see like the roadblocks ahead, or I don't know if it's just like a bullheaded vision where I'm not going to accept no as the answer. But I have this very firm belief that if it's been done or if it needs to be done, there is a human in the world that will figure it out. I want to just ask a question really quick because I'm thinking about all of these little things that you've, or they're not little, they're actually massive, goals that you've set yeah. and that you've accomplished throughout your life. And yeah. I, there are many of them I didn't even know about, which is <laughs> incredible. It's very, it seems really simple to say, okay, I'm going to go do that thing. And then, okay, I just went and did that thing. Yeah. But what I want to know about is there's got to be, like you said, you missed the ball a zillion times the first yeah. time you played golf. So there had to have been a bunch of roadblocks that came your way sure. on each of those journeys to getting to where you wanted to be. Now, the difference I find between somebody like you and somebody maybe that doesn't hit their goal is the person like you, you keep going through that roadblock. So what do you think it is inside of you that makes you keep going even when maybe you fail or you mess up or it hits the fan. Yeah. And can I add on, can I add on to that? Because the, what I find, I find myself wildly inspired hearing you say, I look at something and be like, you know what? Pro soccer, pro golf, million dollar training, $10 million. Okay, cool. And then the other half of me is like, I want to punch you in the face because I am not, I don't look at something and be like, it's me. So for <laughs> me, and I think a lot of the listeners or even the people that you coach who don't maybe have the bravado or false bravado, whatever we want to label mm -hmm. it. We don't have the thing that you have. How do you coach people beyond that? I'm missing the ball and I believe I can be a professional to the people who are just like, I could never be that. And why would I think like, how are you coaching people to get off that if they don't, if we don't possess the thing that you sure. have? Sure. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think to address both of them, the, there's a couple of universal truths in, in this world. Like we're going to live and we're going to die. Like that's it, 
right? Gary Vee was once asked, like, what are the three, like, give me three inspirational words. And he looks back at the woman, he says, you're going to die. And so at some point, we're all going to exit this earth, mm -hmm. right? Regardless of what your yeah. beliefs are. At some point, we're going to. And so we can either go and continue working towards those things, or we can 100% wake up with satisfaction and say, okay, well, I'm okay where I am today. And, and that's a decision that you have to make each and every day. And I grew up in a very lower middle-class family. And I grew up in, you know, like rest in peace. My father is the greatest influence in my life. Um, but I was repeatedly told that everything was quote unquote pie in the sky. That was his favorite quote, right? And so, you know, I would tell him about all these dreams and aspirations I had. And he's like, it's like just not for people like us. And I was like, who are we? You know, and, mm -hmm. and so, I literally had to redefine who I was and I had to define myself as a person that achieves success. And so for me, it was almost assuming a new identity or an identity that perhaps I didn't grow up in. Um, or maybe I did and I didn't even realize it, mm -hmm. but my identity is just of somebody that is going to achieve. And so I never looked at, Jen, to what you asked, I never looked at things as roadblocks. I always looked at them as things I just didn't know yet. Like there are a lot of things I don't know in this world and there are very few things I do know. And those few things I do know, I am ethically obligated. If I want to stay true to my mission, which is to change a billion lives through the vehicle of health and fitness, to, to share those things with as many people as possible that also want to know those things. There are a lot of people in the world that don't care at all what I have to say. That's great. Like, I hope they're living a fantastic life. I hope they're healthy. I hope they're happy. I hope they're successful, right? But the people that want to learn about health and fitness, that want to learn about how to change lives through the vehicle of nutrition, I'm ethically obligated to get this in front of you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously there's a demand on all of our time. And so, sure, I need to be compensated for that at some point. But, you know, to speak to the, the roadblock thing directly, like, I wish I had an amazing answer. Like, I really do. I wish I was like, I am this all knowing, like motivational person that can wake up in the morning and be like, it's these affirmations and these, you know, I think Tony talks about incantations and I, I don't know, man, cause I don't do that. Like mm -hmm. I don't wake up in the morning with an affirmation and you know, <laughs> it, to be completely honest, I probably doubt myself more than the average person would think that I do. Um, but I think that it's, I realize at some point life is going to be over. And am I okay with where I'm at today? No, I'm not. Like, I'm just not. And if you're okay with where you are, stop trying to change. That's half the problem. Mm. If you're okay with where you are, why are you complaining that you don't have these things? So you're either okay with where you're at or you want to be somewhere else. Like, there's really no middle ground. And so if you want to be somewhere else, you have to stop acting as if you're okay with where you are. If you're okay with where you are, you have to stop desiring that's going to make where you are more miserable. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's just a choice. And I've always made the choice of, I want more. And I make no, like I make no bones about it. Like I, I like, like I, I like having nice things in my life. I'm okay with saying that. Like mm -hmm. for a long time, I was like, oh, I'm so shy. Like, I don't, I don't want to say that I wanted a big house or a nice car. Or, but at the end of the day, if you're in my circle, you know that the only reason I want nicer things is to share those with the people around me. I think that Anybody that has spent time with me will tell you I'm the most giving person on the face of the planet. Um, you know, and, and because of that, I can't wake up with any level of satisfaction or content. So I have to wake up and I have to work even when I don't want to. It is what it is. It's, it's the life I've, I've chosen. Not that it was chosen for me. It's the life I've mm -hmm. chosen. I woke up with those desires and I have to honor them. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> I thought I was gonna take the conversation in a different way. Yeah. And so I, I'm gonna pause here because I want I want to really listen to my intuition yeah. and take this conversation here. Let's go. For those people who are like, no, 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 it's going to be about the business. Don't worry. We're going to talk about his eight figure <laughs> business. We're going to talk about why he closed down a $6 million revenue stream a, a year later, uh, more or less. Yeah. It's like yeah. already doing 60%. I mean, the guys, we, we're going to get to the business of it, but I don't know if we can hear somebody talk about, you know, multiple millions and not feel something in relation to us without anchoring what we believe and know to be true. So the question I have for you is, I know that what you had said, if I'm repeating it correctly, I know that what I have right now, I'm destined for more. Yeah. Is there a point to where you reach enough? It's interesting. This is the question that's been on my mind the most that's the last been a six lot months. On my mind, mm -hmm. same going into this year. Same. I would argue like same time. Um, I think the answer is no. 
I think the honest answer is no. And I think that the cliche answer that the universe wants us, or I'll say the universe, I'll actually say like, you know, the, the public, if you will, right. Public opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they want us to say yes. And I think that they want you to say yes because they want to get closer to where we have achieved. Right. And so it's like, you always want the next person to kind of slow down so you can catch them. Um, mm-hmm. I want the people above me to keep winning so that I have something bigger to chase. Like mm-hmm. I love seeing the people above me win and I want to be their biggest supporter. Mm-hmm. Like I, I promise you, and, and I think Jen can attest to this, yeah. like you can text me at 11 o'clock at night and be like, I need a favor yep. by midnight. And I promise you all come through guaranteed. Right. Mm-hmm. And I want you to win period. Like you mm-hmm. could have told me like, we're going to do this podcast in Africa and I would have been in Africa. Like I want you to win the end. And so I think for me, if I want to see people get to the highest levels and I want to remain as a high achiever, that levels the bar up for me. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think there will be. I think that the connotation of what I desire today is different than what it was 10 years ago. I also have a five-year-old. 10 years ago, the five-year-old wasn't in the picture. Today, I feel as though 95% of what I do is for my Mm five-year-old, is paving the way for her. But how, what is that going to look like when she's 25? That's right. Right? Like where, what will my role be in her future when, you know, I've, the last 18 months for me were a lot of loss, right? I lost my father. I lost my uncle. Mm -hmm. Um, What is it going to be like when I get to those last 10, 15 years of my life? How will I feel about what I'm achieving? What I'm doing with the things that I have achieved? How I'm using those to set Mm -hmm. up the next generation? Um, I don't know those answers, but I can only assume that I'm not just going to sit and and rest on, well, I did this for X number of years. So, Mm -hmm. so now I'm, I'm good. Like I, I'm the self-proclaimed laziest person on the planet. Um, but even in all of my laziness, I don't think that I'll ever stop wanting or achieving more. Um, Mm. and that might seem oxymoronic, but, uh, that's just how I approach everything. So there's no such thing as enough. In my world, Mm -hmm. and I I feel like now I'm painting myself as this person that's like, just wants all the things, which is probably terrible. All your listeners are like, wow, this guy sucks. Um, No, I I don't, I don't think there is. Like, Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, if if your partner in your life, if if you say, are they loving? Well, yeah, but I think you can always show more love. I think um, I look at a billion people through the vehicle of health and fitness, that's our goal. Is that enough? To a lot of people, they're going to say it's a lot, but a lot and enough are very different. Um, I don't think that's enough because there's 9 billion people in the world. So why am I okay with leaving 8 billion unchanged? You know, um, I, I think there's, there's levels for sure. I think that there is what most people would consider adequate, but adequate and enough are also different. Mm. Um, So no, I I genuinely do not believe that the word enough will enter my vocabulary because I think it triggers complacency and I don't ever, ever want to find complacency. Hmm. I will back this up for a moment because I've been thinking about this so much. This is a, it's a really big concept when you start to get the things that you desire, when you start to win, when you start to set a goal and achieve the goal, then you're like, wait a second. Now I have a goal that's a little bit bigger than that goal. So the faster that you get to the goal, it's just the faster the goalpost moves and the right. And it gets even bigger. But the reason that that happens is because we get the most dopamine from anticipation. We get the Amen. most joy from the chase, from the achievement, not from the thing. I just mm-hmm. launched a book, like not from the shiny thing, right? Yeah. It's from, I, 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 I want to talk about this later, but I, I subconsciously, I, I'm getting a, a hint of feeling that like you dropped that other source of revenue so that you could build another one because you <laughs> love building. And I think that it's okay to love the build yeah. and love the game and love the growth. And there is a lot of conversations out there where it's like, no, you should work less and and not love that. But I think that if you're listening to this and you really do genuinely love achievement and you love the chase and you love helping people and you love setting the next goal and you love working towards it and you love anticipating the feeling that's gonna happen when your friend wins because you helped them or all of the people that you're gonna impact when you take that next step and you do that next thing or you start before you're ready, like that's the juice of life. Yeah. That's the juice of life for me. And so when I sit here and I listen to you say, it's never enough, that's what I hear. That you just genuinely enjoy the work of being a human on this planet and putting in the work and chasing and achieving Mm -hmm. and doing. Can can we also say that 
I think that when we hear the word enough, we tend to place, we almost place it like in a container where it's like in a single vertical. And can we say that the connotation of enough will evolve throughout the course of your life? Meaning, you know, when, when we say enough, I think viscerally people are drawn to finance for whatever reason, right? So we, we say, are we achieving enough? Have we created success? And everybody immediately goes to financial success. Right. Um, is there enough money? Well, what's the connotation of money? Because growing up for me, money was a, a method of paying bills. Once I could pay my bills freely, then it became a method of freedom. Once it became a function of freedom, now it's become a function of philanthropy. Once mm -hmm. it becomes a function of philanthropy, like what's the next level mm -hmm. of it? And so do I have enough to pay my bills? Yes. But do I have enough money to do all the things I want? No, I currently do not today. Uh, and so I think that there's an evolution to the word enough, which to what you said, the goalpost is always moving. And I think, yeah, a hundred percent. I could, I could absolutely tell you, I love the chase in all things in life. And I think that like maybe connecting the dots now, like here live in person, maybe that's why I was dumb enough to always believe that I could achieve the highest levels of everything because I love the journey so much. Mm -hmm. Like I think back to when I was playing professional golf, I liked practicing more than I liked tournaments. Like I did one bodybuilding show. I loved the prep way more than I hated the day of the, like I hated the day of the event, hated show day. Absolutely. Like just nothing. Fun Jen, this it. is a co-hosted podcast. You can't whisper. People Hold on. Are, like, you can't. I mean, <laughs> she's mouthing. Me too. Oh, okay. no, no, baby. There's a mic in front of you. Like, oh my gosh. Because I don't want to interrupt him because he's just yeah. on a roll, but I totally yeah. get it. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I had the same experience. Yeah. And like, but every day I loved and like, you know, you wake up if anybody that's done anything like that. You wake up in the morning, you're tired, you're exhausted. You're, you're doing cardio that you don't want to do, but like, you know, you got your music on and you're thinking about what it's going to feel like to walk on stage, but it never lives up to the hype. It never does. And honestly, it was just the journey of getting better. It was the journey of improvement. It was the journey of commitment. And, uh, oh you know, my gosh. I, okay. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. If you're still with us and you want to know how this man has built this massive business, we're getting there, but it's the Jasmine star show and your girl's going to be a little bit jealous. I mean, jealous, not jealous, excuse me, selfish. What, what was that Freudian? Yes, I'm jealous. <laughs> ah, I will be rooting for you, I will be rooting for you because I want you to win, I want, I want your <clears throat> bar to go higher. Uh, you and Jen uh, kind of cut from the same fabric. Yeah. The luxury silk fabric that's like hand woven. <laughs> uh, and I, I want that. Three days ago, I'm having a conversation with my husband and we're driving and I casually mentioned, oh, I know, I know the hand of poker your mom would play. I know the hand of poker your dad would play. Your dad will fold him until he has a full house. Like he'll just fold his cards. And your mom, well, you know, she likes her safe bets. And he said, what hands do you play? And I said, I just want to be the house. And then I said, I know what cards you play. I was like, you love, you love winning on the river. And he says, no, I love the game. And it hurt me because I'm at the table gritting my teeth through my freaking hands because I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be the house. Watch me be the damn house. I believe I'm going to be the house. Yeah. I hate, I hate the practice. How do y'all love wow. practicing more than you love the show? Help me help <laughs> listeners y'all out here. And I'm like, help me love it. Help me love that. So I'll, I'll give you something when you're, I'll, I'll give you the golf analogy. Okay. When you step inside the ropes on the first tee, there's no opportunity. Wait, hold on, for hold on. Okay, okay. Daughter of an immigrant, brown girl. When you step inside the ropes, I'm <laughs> yeah, we need to, okay. we a little need bit to more. describe this. Okay. I was like, so <laughs> at, a, at a pro tournament, everything's roped off, meaning only the players are inside the ropes. Okay. So like, okay. when okay. you're inside the ropes, it means you're playing or you're a caddy. Oh, That's I like it, this. Right? I'm gonna make an illusion when I'm when I one day when I'm speaking in front of like a bunch of rich white guys and be like, so when you step in the ropes, yes. you step yes. inside the ropes. Yes. And you step to the first team, you're going to tell them, and they're going to be like, damn, she knows golf. Happy yeah. Gilmore. Okay, right? that's the only okay. golf I know. Okay. And they're okay. on the outside Gilmore is inside the ropes. Exactly. Okay, okay, yeah. now we know, yeah. now we know. Yeah. Okay, when you step inside the ropes, So you're you. inside the ropes, you're on the first tee. The next 18 holes, the next four and a half hours of your life, there's no improvement that's going to happen. You're not going to get better. You have what you have that day. There's no opportunity to get better. Now, afterwards, you can get better. You can learn from all the mistakes you made. You can look at all the victories you had inside those four and a half hours and say, this is what I did right. But you're not going to get better in those four and a half hours. I like to get better. Hmm. 
I want to be better. I know I'm not good enough yet. Hmm. I know there's another level for me. Okay. I know there are people out there doing more that I believe I can get to their level. I can surpass them. Mm. This was actually an issue for me early on in my life. Like I had mentors and I'm like, I'm going to find a way past you. But, isn't, like, that, but isn't that when you know you had a good mentor? Because had they had themselves, oh, listen, the they ones would be that farther were, than they were. The ones that were cool with it, yes. Oh. The ones that like, <clears throat> as I surpassed them, weren't cool with it. Uh, like, that's another okay. conversation. But the ones that supported the journey, absolutely. Like there are people that know definitively, they're like, man, he passed me. And like, now I want to learn from him. And that's amazing. And, and so like, I think those are the kinds of people you want in your life. But that's how, for me, it's always the pursuit of just getting better. Like, I know that on show day, like, that's it. Like, hmm. all the hard work, like, you don't get to work hard that day. Like, you don't get to become better at your craft. How long does that win last for you? So, you know, when you, you're prepping, you're prepping, you're prepping, you have the show day, whatever that is. Yeah. The golf tournament, you won it, you've got the trophy. Like, you crushed it, you were on stage and you have the body of your dreams and you just, you did it. You're on, it how, that winning moment, when you finished it, how long is it? Man, I don't even know if it exists. I'm gonna be honest. I, I think back to the last, to the last tournament I won two years ago. Um, I, still, I have the picture holding like the little championship belt. I don't even remember that moment. I, I don't at all. So like, you're immediately going to, okay, what's next? Yeah. I'm already thinking about how do I get better? So and I'm actually thinking about all the areas where I was not very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I always had this thing, so like, this is gonna sound completely different, but I suck at Christmas, right? Christmas morning, I'm not good at opening gifts. All I care about is like everyone else's gift. Mm -hmm. The anticipate. I just like, I know I put so much effort into like, yo, like the gift I got you and like, the <laughs> thought that went into it and like, like I sacrificed everything to be able to give like what I can give on Christmas day. And like, so like when people give to me, I'm like, I probably suck. I'm like, I don't have a big response, like a big, like, oh my God, that's so nice. Like, because all I care about is like the journey of like making you happy, like giving to others. And so I'm like, I, I am not good. This is massive character trait. I like celebrating victories and like receiving. I'm not good at it uh, in any way. So would it be fair to say that you've become as successful as you've become? Because there is no win. You just keep going, just past it. You just keep going and keep going. Because I, I'm, I'm thinking about the person right now that's listening to this, that's like, so then what's it all for? Sure. But for you, yeah. it's for the journey. Yeah. And if uh, what I'm getting at this is I'm listening to somebody speak that's unbelievably financially successful, uh, and I'm just speaking financially sure. right now, but you're successful in so many areas of life. And I like to take apart what makes people successful. Like why, mm -hmm. why did this happen to you? And what I'm getting out of this conversation, which is very, very interesting and actually proves a lot of the things that I've been thinking lately, very correct, is because you are obsessed with the journey, not the outcome. And so mm -hmm. the journey never really ends. It's, it's your life experience. It. it is who you are, is the anticipation and the work towards it. So you just don't stop until you get it because you love the not stopping. Yeah, and I think that you understand there's levels to it. And so mm -hmm. I think it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I just recently saw somebody, somebody beat the game of Tetris. Like beat the whole game. Like the whole game shut down because like there wasn't- Has that never happened before? I, I think know. this was like the first time that a human has ever done it. I think a computer did it, but a human just did it, right? How many years has Tetris been in play? I, I so don't know. So I would be willing to bet you, I'd be willing to bet you that the, the users of Tetris will now go down because the game has been beaten. Mm. It was perceived as an unbeatable game. And so like if I had to track use of this thing, it was perceived to be unbeatable. So the journey was infinite, right? If it's unbeatable, the journey is infinite. I think that people will stop playing because they know there's an end point, right? And so like any, I grew up as a, like a little kid playing video games. Any game I had beaten, it was no longer interesting. I didn't care as I was, I always wanted the pursuit of like getting to that. Right. Mm. And I, I loved like those like infinite loops. Like it's, it's fun. You know, I think for me, um, as you said that I was literally having visions of my life and it's like, I've always, I mean, this is somewhat counter, but I've always just wanted to find new ways of making people happy. I think that anybody that knows me, like that's, that's my jam. Like that's how I got to where I am. And like, I'm literally having visions of like, 
I was so broke. I would like, somebody would want $500. And I'm like, I don't have $500. How can I make $500 today? And like my food, you know, who cares about like my house or my car, but like, yo, you need $500. I got to make $500 for you. Like this happened to me in high school. Like literally like there's a time. Fun fact, like my high school girlfriend, there's a pair of Jordans she wanted. And so like I got them and like she was like, she had small feet, so like kid size. But like they didn't come in like the suitcase, right? It was like this like special release. Like, so she wanted like one size bigger so she could have the suitcase. Well, that was like $200 more. And I'm like, I don't have $200. So like I picked up a shift at work that day and I was like cleaning every golf club like the best I could. And so I had like $220, like straight to the mall, got them, like gave them to her. And I'm like, how many times have I done things like that? You know what I mean? And it's like, I, if I have it or I don't have it, I'm going to find a way. And it's like that mentality has served me so well because it's never been about me. Mm. It was never about me. It was like I just wanted to serve. And I think so many people think success is this selfish piece. And there are elements of being selfish that have to happen. But success ultimately is the most selfless thing in the world. You will become successful because of how selfless you can allow yourself to be. Mm. And becoming successful allows you to be the most selfless person in the world. And so there is nothing selfish about success. And it's like, I didn't know that at the beginning. It's something I came to the realization of, but for whatever reason, it's how I acted from an early point in my life. Mm. And, and honestly, I think a lot of it was like my mother instilled that in me very, very early. Um, on, that, on, on that note, um on, there was a recent Instagram post, yeah. and you talked about the eight-figure business secret. Yeah. And what, as a, as a prep, it was when you just talked about success, and oh. you talked about making sure that you're in a position to make these types of decisions that would set you up in figuring out how do I best serve. Sure. Um, you were sharing services for free and getting people results. Yeah. And so people are like, whoa, wait, wait, you got to, you know, <laughs> eight figures in a business by giving stuff away for free. Yeah. And here you are talking about success in the same manner. Uh -huh. So can you connect the dots for us? Yeah, I don't think that, well, A, I don't think that you should ever pay me until I prove that I'm worth being paid. I mean, I think that's just like the foundational element of, you know, uh, you know, Do you, I, I okay, think, but apply this in, in, in different types of businesses that you've sure. had over the years. Yeah. That there's somebody who's listening and it was like, okay, but I'm a makeup artist. Yeah. Are, are you just not going to pay me? And then like, then yeah. it's up to your own opinion. Did I do a good job? If I'm a dentist, I'm just like a root canal and I'm like, I don't feel any pain anymore. I'll now pay you. Like, I think there's an element of, yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I think that, like, like I, I mean, I think there's an element of for sure, because listen, I, I mean, if left to our own devices, if we go to, you know, to anybody that's trying to achieve success and I say, like, should somebody pay you? You're, you should say yes. If you say no, like, that's a whole nother issue. Like, yeah. we got to work on your skill set of, yeah. you know, fulfilling on, on your promises. But I, I think that, yeah, like, I, I mean, the market dictates everything. Hmm. Like, I don't give a, I, I don't care how good you think you are. Like, at the end of the day, I, you should think that you're the best in the world. And, but the market's going to tell you how much you're worth, period. Mm -hmm. and, and the reality is, like, when, here's the defining story, and maybe this will connect with a lot of people, is uh, when I was at my lowest point, uh, there, people will tell you I have a Starbucks obsession. I went to Starbucks every day of my life for over eight years, meaning I did not miss a single day. <laughs> like, and I ordered the same drink. And I watched inflation happen because I think it started at like three dollars. Now it's up. It's up over four dollars now, right? Wait, but hold on. But I'm a storyteller. What's the drink? Iced venti americano with an extra shot. Okay. Yeah. And would you have the whole Starbucks experience where you would sit there and drink it, or you just walked no, into Starbucks gotta go. and got the always got to go? Okay. Yeah. I never so if it's there. an iced venti americano extra shot, is that four shots? Five shots. Five shots. Five shot americano. Okay. Every day. Okay. Six shots on Sunday when I'm speaking. <laughs> okay. We call it six shot Sunday. Six. Okay. Yeah, when I'm on stage. Okay. So. Okay. Um, that's eight years, four eight years shots running, a day. Never missed. Okay. Never missed. Okay. Um, so my lowest point, I go to get that drink. It's Thanksgiving day. It's 2014. Okay. Uh, I'm in Copper, Colorado. I am on a date, like a, my first like overnight trip with the girl I'm dating. And we go to Safeway to get Thanksgiving dinner, right? Prep. Got to get the coffee first. So we go straight to Starbucks line. They get to the front, they, I think it was like $3.67. And I got declined. And I was like, I tried to play it off. I'm like, man, something must be off. But I knew, like I knew mm. I got no money. I was like, I'm overdrawn. 
is Thanksgiving. They're super nice. They're like, no worries, it's on us, right? Except now we're walking the aisles of the store and I'm like, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. I'm about to have to tell this girl I'm dating that I have no money. I'm like, how am I going to figure this out? And so like I open up my banking account to confirm it. Sure enough, negative $27, five cents. Okay. I'll never forget the number. <laughs> and uh, kept walking, more and more things in the cart. I'm like, fuck, oh, how, like, what am I going to say? We get to the front just to like wallow in my own pity. I open up the banking account again. A $500 check had cleared from like the, like it's not supposed to happen. It's a bank holiday. Yeah. Money is not supposed to hit your account for yeah. whatever reason it did. Okay. I'm like, swipe that motherfucker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like make sure it worked. Yup, sure enough, I pay for the groceries. Yo, I ran back to Starbucks and pay for my drink. I'm like, karma is on my okay, side, right? Okay, pay okay. for the drink okay. for sure. And I'm like, all right, like that's my sign. I gotta do it, right? I have to figure this thing out, right? I gotta figure out my life basically. Okay. Uh, what are you doing at this time? It's tw this is 10 years ago. What are you doing a decade ago? Like dabbling in like the online thing. I, had, I actually just left a corporate job, like okay. maybe two months prior. It just didn't feel aligned with it. Okay. Um, when you say online thing, online training. Online training. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I actually, I had a real cush corporate job, like 200 grand a year. And I just rolled out. It just didn't feel aligned. Um, and so I'm in this position where I'm like, I got to figure out my life. And I go home and the first consult I have is with somebody. She's a national champion weightlifter. And I'm like, man, like this is it. Like karma is on my side. And I'm listening to her talk and tell me all these stories about all the things that have gone wrong with other coaches. And I'm like, cool, like I'm confident in my skill set. I can help you. And uh, I get to the end and something inside of me said, like, there's a chance she says no based on price. And so I said, all right. I said, well, I'm going to help you. I said, but I can't charge you. Like, let me rewind two days. I was overdrawn <laughs> in my bank account. I couldn't afford coffee. I have the opportunity to sell a national champion. And I'm like, nah, like not even going to sell you. I'm going to just, I'm going to just help you for free. And so I did. And within 48 hours, she's like, I've never experienced anything like this. Like your level of detail is next level. And so she told everybody that she was associated with. And then the next week I had 10 new paying clients. Mm. And I was like, man, being really good at what you do always will pay. And I knew if I could go out and I could prove to people I'm really good at what I do, A, they'll want to keep staying with me and pay me at some point. And B, they'll tell people that I'm really good at what I do. I didn't know marketing. I didn't know sales. I hated sales back then. I hated marketing. Like, I, I, quite frankly, I wouldn't even go live on Facebook. Like, I wouldn't even do a video. The first video I did, I grabbed my dog. Because I was like, yo, if they think I look stupid, they'll love the dog. <laughs> like, that was it. I was like, they'll, like, that was how I honestly justified being able to put a video up on social media. And I think that was like, that was my opinion. I've always been of the opinion that if you just put your services out there and you're really good at what you do, mm -hmm. like, you help enough people, you start helping yourself. Can I get a little bit more granular? Please. So, mm, do you um, do you have online programs? I do. Uh, today, yeah, I do. Okay, so if, if someone's like, "Well, I want to take a course, but I want to pay for it after," sure. What does that look like? Well, I've proven that I can make a lot of people a lot of money. Okay, so when you debut it, because I'm putting myself always in the shoes of I, I, earlier this morning, I had a conversation with Jen, and I'm like, oftentimes, if we were just to get like very myopic, sure. there's three types of people who are watching or listening, yep. right? Mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. somebody who is in the Jason Strata who's doing eight, um, nine figures, and they're like, this is my compatriot, like I want to see what he's doing a little bit different to yeah. spice it is what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Then you have a, a listener who's like maybe like three or four years behind you, who's like hitting their first seven figures, if you're kind of vibing with it, yep. and then you have people who go a few years behind you. This is the former self. This is the person who's I'm not being able to buy my Starbucks yeah, coffee, yeah. right? So then as we speak to these things, uh, I want to make sure that, yes, I believe that once we put our stuff out, people are going to be like, well, there's enough concrete evidence that this person can drive results. But in the beginning, new offer or new entrepreneur, where are you speaking to them about like offering that, like the so free concept? Alex Hormozzi says in his book, he says, start the whisper. So you got to start the whisper. I'll tell you openly at eight figures right now, I'm getting ready to launch a new offer. And I had the thought on the plane ride here last night, like, man, what if I just open it up for free to like 10 or 20 people to start the whisper? 
That was the first thought that went through my mind. Hmm. Like, I don't need to give away for free at this right. point. I don't have to. I know I could sell it and mm -hmm. I'm good enough now at marketing and sales. I can make it work. Mm -hmm. um, but the authenticity of proving its value still connects hard with me. Mm. If you're a brand new entrepreneur, now listen, I think that you have to set parameters on free. I'm not saying like, hey, you want to work with me on, in fitness? Well, you got me for life. Like, <laughs> that's not the free <laughs> offer, right? Uh, but I am saying, hey, for the next 28 days, right? It's 2024, yeah. it's New Year's resolution time. You commit to you, I'll commit to you, right? Meet me halfway. You commit to yourself, I'll mm -hmm. commit to you too. Got it. Uh, in 28 days, we'll see what we can do. Because I don't want you to invest money and it end up like last year where you said you were committed, but you weren't that committed. Mm. I would actually feel guilty that you gave me money and you backed out on yourself, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So instead, you commit to you, I'll commit to you. If we're in a good place in 28 days, then we can talk about the future, fair? Mm. Right, and all of a sudden now it's like, hey, this 28 days actually is the beginning to something bigger, mm. right? Free is not always free. Free is the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Free is that, it's that connection piece, but it's what allows us to, you know, to have a demonstration asset of success. It's what allows us to have deeper connection than just a marketing based connection. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, everything I've ever done, I mean, my whole nutrition certification was called the connection based model. Everything to me is human connection. And, and I'm a big believer that's how, you know, that's the best marketers and sellers in the world. People you buy from, you feel very connected to. Can we workshop? Anytime you want. Well, right now. Let's do it. Okay. You're on the plane, you think about the whisper. Uh, what's, what's making you say yes? What's making you say no? Are you looking at this beta? How long are they going to get a result? Sure. What are you wanting from them? Yeah. Like, I want somebody who's listening to this to be like, I got into him. I got, I had a conversation with a 10 figure business owner yeah, yeah. talking about how he's building a whisper and I could do the same thing. Yeah. So as I like much how as you just projected in my future, 10 figures. Thank you. For that, that. That's right. Oh, hey, hey, hey. you, you know what? That. That's what I do. I like I'm that. an expander, bro. I'm not, you were, you were just dreaming too small. I, I heard uh, it. I love uh, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But somebody's listening right now. Yeah. Like, wh how are you workshopping this? Like how long before this new offer that somebody gets results? How are you trying to leverage that talk okay to about so that. yeah so my last mastermind which is the the six million i shut down um oh is, actually okay let's go there let's tap there for a second yeah so yeah. let's talk about um building the whisper for the next thing but sure. closing down the six million dollar revenue stream and i didn't know it was a mastermind so thank you yeah give us a little bit of context there how so, long have you okay, had the so mastermind that, so that started with the whisper okay that started with i started that whole program i basically six or seven of like my best producing clients from previous programs, I reached out to them and I said, hey, Friday morning, 10 a.m., here's a Zoom link, get your asses on. And, and the whole premise was we are high-performing entrepreneurs and we do not have a place to talk about the things that come with being a high-performing entrepreneur. That was it. Like, okay. I was, and it was just as selfish as it was selfless. So I'll never forget the very first one. One of my students that had gone zero to a million dollars in 20 months, he comes in and he's like, I just crossed a million dollars and I want to burn the whole thing down. And I was like, that's why we built this. Like, that's why we're here, right? Because real talk, like, yeah. you hit your first million, it's not what you expect. Yeah. For most Always. people, real right? Talk. Like, yeah, real like, talk. Yeah. You're like, man, like, people are like, you're a millionaire. Yeah. You're like, I'm not a millionaire. I got a million dollars top line, <laughs> yeah. right? And I got a lot of expenses. I ain't a millionaire yet. So, but it's like, that was what that was. And then it, it kept evolving. And I just let it evolve the way it was supposed to evolve. I'm like, what's good? What's bad? Like, what do we got to change? And all of a sudden, like, Everybody was like, how do I get in that Friday Zoom call? And I'm like, come on, come on, like, keep coming. This was a free right? Friday This is Zoom free. Call. Like, I didn't charge any of these people anything. By the way, these are my highest performing clients. They're the ones that I could have been like, yo, five grand a month. And they're like, cool, mm -hmm. no big deal, mm -hmm. right? But just wanted them in there. And then uh, an event, I was like, all right, I'm gonna open up the doors. Let's see how this goes. So then I did like one of Russell's famous pitches. Mm -hmm. I did, uh, it was actually the scariest pitch of my life. At the end of it, like I, I was like, this is everything you'll get. And I'm like, and now you have a decision. You can stay seated in this room or you can follow me. And I like threw my pen across the room and I walked out the door. And I was like, oh you, God, I was like, what I was if like you'll either walks? meet me at the end of the room or you'll stay in <laughs> here. And if that's the case, goodbye. Ever. And like, I was like, oh, shit, what if nobody comes with me? And like, sure enough, like one person did. And the whole, like, I mean, it was actually one of my most successful pitches. Like, honestly, it was, it was during COVID, small room. I think it was only like, 60 70 people there i think i converted like 30. Wow. and it was a 25k offer wow and i was like damn like we did pretty good right okay and so i have a question though i want to back up a little bit yeah. because you already have this group going with uh -huh. people right you had people getting results in that group or like sure. did you use in a previous product were you able to because often i'll say to people or what we'll do sometimes is like i'll let you in for free in exchange for an amazing case study and testimonial sure so there still is like an exchange of energy Didn't even ask. 
Didn't even ask. Didn't even, didn't ask. even have any case studies or testimonials from the group. It was just like, okay. Didn't even ask. No. Now, obviously we started creating hype, right? The whisper started. And I was like, so they're like, well, what is it? I'm like, I call it the boardroom. It's like, this is your board of advisors, basically, right? We're all going to serve as each other's board of advisors. And so I documented all the things that were happening, all the wins that were happening inside of it. And so like when I made the pitch, I was like, here's all the things that have happened in like the last six months. So you had the proof. I had the proof. From that. So yeah. that's, uh, it was working for you without having to ask yeah, that. Yeah. So you basically invested your time, but you did make money from that investment Absolutely. because you were getting them results. Yeah. So I love this, yeah. actually, this concept because you need to prove, the, 100%. you need to be able to have those case studies in order to sell something. Here's the, the real magic to me is when I stood up there, I stood up there pitching with conviction. Yes. Right. I'm like, right. yo, this is what we did right. in six months. Like, I don't want to sell you something that I don't yet believe in. So I'm like, I know this works. I got high performing entrepreneurs making more money with less stress. And you're a brand new entrepreneur. I can make you lots of money and never have the stress. Right. So that's 2020. So that was 2020. And then you close it and you close that revenue. I just closed it. 2023. Less than six months ago. When was your event? Six, less than six months. Less than six months ago. I closed it. I closed it like two, two weeks later. Okay. I left your event and something in me changed. Something in me was like, I gotta listen to my gut. And like, my gut had been telling me like something's off. Like, it just, I didn't feel aligned. And Can I you go deeper into that a little yeah. bit? Because I think a lot of people listening to this can also feel that way about yeah. something. And I feel that way about some things too. And I yeah. can't necessarily put my finger on it so I don't move. Sure. I stay stuck in it because I'm like, I don't know what it is. Did you know what the off thing was at all? or was I knew, it like I knew what product made me feel off. I and didn't know why. And what was the off? Like, what does off feel like? <sighs> like, I didn't see trajectory. Like, I, I didn't see growth. I didn't see evolution. I felt very stagnant. You or evolution and growth in your clients? The product. In the product. The product. Yeah. The product felt stagnant. Okay. And mm -hmm. so, like, I, I'm a visionary to the definition. And, and so I always have to be learning. I always have to be growing. I always have to be evolving. And I didn't feel that in that product. So anytime I was connected to the product, I'm like, this just doesn't, doesn't feel good. Yeah. Now, there were clients in that product that I felt very good about because we were basically doing one-on-one -on -one consulting. And so I've kept them. I'm still working with them, but the product as a whole, I'm like, I'm out. And so like announced overnight and then like my phone lit up like the day I did it. This is the crazy part. The day I did it, my phone blew up from people. I didn't even know how my number and they were like, ah, oh, like, how are you doing this? Like, congrats. Like, I wish I could do that. And there's like, I was like, man, there's a lot of people that don't feel aligned in the mastermind space and they feel stuck. And so like part of me is like, why don't you just do it? And like, I guess like financial security and all that stuff. But like, right. I was like, when you shut it, did you know the next thing? Did you have an inkling? No idea. Okay. So you closed it in blind faith and then something comes to you yep. and you're like, I think that this is in alignment to where I am now. And so, you have enough truth credibility to launch it without needing to build testimonials, but you're like, or, or case studies or whatever the case may yeah. be. But on the flight from Washington to Miami, yeah. you start debating about building a whisper. Yeah. Where are you at with that? I mean, the flight was yesterday. I'm probably going to do it. <laughs> really? Yeah. As, as we're talking now, I'm like, I'm even more compelled. Hmm. And so. Like, are you going to handpick? I am. Okay. I will. It won't okay. be like open enrollment. Now, like I'll say two phases. Phase one, I'll handpick. Phase two, I'll open enroll. And then, I'll, and then I'll launch. And I know when I'll launch. Can we talk about the, the, the strategy there? Sure. So um, somebody's listening and they say, okay, well, I want to build a whisper and maybe I'm not where Jason is, but sure. I can use the exact framework. Yeah. So you're thinking about building a whisper. How many people do you want to start with in a perfect world? I think five. Oh, wow. Somebody's listening right now. Five is five is a number like five is my first number. Got it. Yeah. Now throw seven of like my ideal client at me. I'm not going to turn the last right, two. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to like pigeonhole myself. That, like, there's a mad, Correct. there's like a, Correct. you know, but you're like five feels good. Five feels good. And then how long is that gestation period? I'm thinking like knowing when I want to launch. So I am deploying against somewhat of a timeline. Okay. Timeline being April. Um, okay. So I'm thinking 30 to 45 days. Now, my question to myself, and this is a guarantee you, like I'll come back to you, with you in a day with an answer because this is all I think about today. I'm going golfing after this. It's all okay. I think about on the golf course. Okay. Because um, you're going golfing because you just want to get better. I just want to play. You and just enjoy about getting better. better. The whole journey will like, be getting better. So when you get into the ropes, 
Your goal is just yes, to Good job, Jazz. <laughs> Look at her. She it. pulled it together hey, quick. Hey. When I get in, except there won't be ropes today. No, no ropes. Not a competition. Uh, not a it. It. But when so I get close. to the first team, so box, but it was good. Like, I, I liked it. Like, respect. <clears throat> respect. So are we really building the next thing right now? We are. Live in front of everybody. Live. Like, wow. Yeah. I mean, so we can go. Five, you're ready. So five, 30 to 45 days. Yep. These are your whispers. Yep. These will become your whispers. These will become the people who can stand up and testify. These will probably be the first people to follow you out of the proverbial room after you toss your pen. 100%. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. Are you talking about the offer yet? Uh, I'm not. Okay, cool. I'm, cool. Yeah. It's something actually I feel like both of you will be involved in though. Cool. Oh, wait, hold up. Am I being pitched to be a whisperer? <laughs> are, are we just I'm getting pitched right now? You're being pitched for how I can send you a whisper. I, I want to close the episode. Like, you, I've been listening to the chat. <laughs> I want to prep myself for the option. Uh, okay. Yep. So then, the golf course today. Yep. You're going to get in and you're just get, What questions are you asking yourself? How are you getting to clarity? Because mm. people say, I'm ready, and then they. Obfuscate. I think it's making sure that I can deliver on the promise. Oh. Oh. That's always the first question. Okay. So, the promise being that what I'm building is different, is new, but has the potential to be more successful than what's currently in this space. When you debate on these things uh -huh. and you're making a decision to start and to uh -huh. build something new, what's your process when it comes to, is it all within you or do yeah. you ask mentors? Let's, do you ask other people? Do you let other people in? Yeah, let's talk about this because I think knowing like what you guys are doing with the podcast, I think this is like right now, this is the gold. Like, we're 50 minutes in and like if you're still here this is the gold and this is what you need to hear because the reality is like yes i'll consult i'll ask questions to people i trust and there's i can count them on one hand mm -hmm. um i'll also just do i will also just do and mm -hmm. and i'm gonna open and this is where my team hates me like my team is like jason but what about this what about, shut up go okay and like ready fire aim Mm -hmm. And and so like we're we're gonna go and we're gonna course correct, but this is why I start with a whisper. Like I got five people that are getting it for free, and if if you're gonna bitch about something like yo you got it for free, yeah. like I'm gonna remind you you got it for free, right? This is something that ultimately I'll sell for you know at least five figures, and and so I feel like I have the right for you to learn with me, and I and I'm going to learn with you, and I'm very open about that in the beginning. Like this is this is a test. Like we're learning together, we're evolving together, and honestly, like those first few people that come in and like that whisper phase, um, they feel like they have ownership of the product. Yeah. Right. Right. They're very loyal. Right. They feel like they help mold right. it, um, and I want them to feel that. I want them, like I'm a big fan of that. Um, so, so yeah, it's like uh, for me, we're gonna go and we're going to do. And we're going to course correct along the way. And I believe this is iteration one. And I think that there will be several iterations. I think part of the reason we've been as successful as we have is I'm very, very open to pivoting anytime. Mm. Um, my certification is self-published for that reason. So like traditionally, you know what it's like, you, you went through a publisher for your book mm -hmm. to get to launch is a long process. Yes. If I self-publish, I can put it out tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So all of my competitors in the nutritional certification space, they'll have publishers. So they want to update their text. It's a year. Well, guess what? Science changes tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Science isn't going to change, but our understanding of science, it changes tomorrow. Well, dope. I can self-publish and I can update tomorrow. You can't update for a year. Who has the most up-to-date stuff? Well, we do. That's our competitive advantage, right? Mm -hmm. People don't realize, like, oh, you self-publish. It's the cheaper way. No, no, no. It's the most efficient way. It's the best way. And so like, that's always what has allowed us to win. And I mean, we can unpack that a million ways, but that's like a... You just do. You have to be in a position to do. Hmm. Jen, do you have anything to close? I think that this just wraps up what we were talking about in the beginning mm -hmm. so perfectly and beautifully mm -hmm. when it comes to, first of all, starting before you're ready, but where your joy really comes from mm -hmm. is the pivoting, is the doing, is the starting, is the building, is the growing. And so you're about to start this new offer. And we just, I, I'm obsessed with the fact that everyone that's listening to this just got to hear this business owner that has built multi, multi, multi million dollar businesses, create an offer in his head. And, and, and what I really love about this is we all know that you're not clear on it and you're just going to start 100%. to figure out mm -hmm. that clarity. You're going yeah. to start before you're ready to get ready. And part of the whole idea of starting before you're ready is because you freaking love starting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The act of starting and not knowing and figuring it out as you go is the thing that you love. Not having a publisher and being able to go in and change and mm -hmm. maneuver and pivot and grow, that's the joy. And if you're somebody that loves that but hasn't been able to acknowledge that you love that, 
because maybe society tells you that you shouldn't love that. You should be prepared. You should know the plan. You should um, know when it's enough and then stop and rest and take a beat. And if that's not you, I, I know that it's not me. And right. I relate to you so much. So mm -hmm. I want to just Im allow the listener right now that feels that way, and if it's not you, that's fine too, to embrace that a little bit and know that I think that there are people out there that really get the joy from the build and the growth and the starting before you're ready and the not knowing. Yeah, can we also add to that and say, yeah. I think the reason a lot of people <clears throat> will fear this is they're like, but what if I fail? Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you the mindset is not what if I fail, it's when do I yes. fail? Because right. I'm gonna tell you I will fail. I know I'm gonna fail. That's like right. I know I'm going to hit roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. That's and so right. it's like, when am I gonna get to my first failure? And, and I think that that in and of itself, like if you mm. can just change that mindset, you'll become more successful. Mm. So many people are setting up what you said, that perfect plan. Like how do we lay this thing out and make sure that it's bulletproof? Nothing's bulletproof. Mm -hmm. Like the perfect plan, like Mike Tyson said, you got a plan until you get punched in the face. You're gonna get punched <laughs> in the face, it's business. Like nobody had a plan for 2020. That's right. COVID happened, some businesses won, some lost. The ones that lost, right. they're winning again. The ones that won, they might be losing now. It is what right. it is. Right. And so the reality is it's not if I fail, it's when do I fail. And it's like, how quickly can you get to failure? Because mm -hmm. as soon as you get to failure, now you know what works and what doesn't work. Exactly. Now you can evolve and now you can build what will work. And that's all we're trying to do. Yes. Jason, how do people find you? How do they go deeper? When do they get to start seeing once the whispers, <laughs> the whispers. are done? Once the whispers are yeah. whispering, where yeah. do they go to go deeper with you? Yeah. Um, I guess Instagram's the best. NCI underscore CEO underscore Jason. Um, just send me a DM, man. Like, I think that fortunately I don't have a big following, but I, I love connecting. Hmm. Like I would love to know, like if you heard this and you have value or you have questions, like send me a message because I answer all my own stuff. Like, um, admittedly I have someone to post my stuff, but like I answer all my own stuff. Um, and I, like, I love it. I love the engagement. I do. I love meeting people. I think that, hmm. you know, I still identify as the 18 year old anorexic kid. So I'm no different than anybody. You know, hmm. I am who I am it is what it is. Hmm. Y'all, thank you for listening to the Jasmine Star Show. Jason, we just barely scratched the surface with who he was, who he is and what he's doing. And uh, some of the high level stuff is I have, I host a podcast because I wanna learn how to get better and I wanna learn how to get stronger. And oftentimes when I have conversations, it takes different forms. And so here I am sitting in front of Jason and I'm watching somebody who is so different than me. And what I want to do is I want to just open up his brain and say, how do I start thinking like you? But instead, what I learned was, how do I start studying you? Mm -hmm. I might never have been born with the skill set of saying, I love the journey and I love the lesson. And I, on show day, I'm already thinking about my mistakes. Like I want to be that thing. Even if I wasn't born that way, I believe I could study and get those attributes and own them. So wherever you are in your journey, I want you to own that you were born or that you could be shaped. Mm -hmm. If this has impacted you in any way, please reach out. Jen underscore Gottlieb, reach out to Jason, send me a message, tag us in your stories. We want to see the improvement that you are making and we wanna hear about the whispers that you began creating. And like my, Mike Tyson said, I love it. I'm gonna end it on this. We always got a plan until we get punched in the face. So until you get punched in the face, may we mm -hmm. revel in where we are in this moment. Thank you for listening to the Jasmine Star Show. Thank you.